sisters, I want to thank God for this privilege to bring the word to you in your homes. It is my prayer that as you partake of today's service, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will empower you. The Lord will cause you to hear a word that will bring change into your life. And when I talk about change, I'm talking about the kind of change that will draw you closer to God. The kind of ch change that will cause you to seek God and not the things of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. So this morning, by the grace of God, I want to speak to us on part two of the message titled, Let Your Scar Be Your Wisdom. Let Your Scar Be Your Wisdom. Please turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 11, verse 1 to 8. The book of Judges chapter 11, verse 1 to 8. It says, Now Jephthah of Gilead was great warrior. He was the son of Gilead, but his mother was a prostitute. Gilead's wife also had several sons. And when these half-brothers grew up, they chased Jephthah off the land. You will not get any of our father's inheritance, they said, for you are the son of a prostitute. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. Soon, he had a band of worthless rebels following him. About this time, the Ammonites began their war against Israel. When the Ammonites attacked, the elders of Gilead sent for Jephthah in the land of Tob. The elders said, come and be our commander. Help us fight the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to them, aren't you the ones who hated me and drove me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? Verse 8. They responded, because we need you. The elders replied, if you lead us in the battle against the Ammonites, we will make you the ruler over all the people of Gilead. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Again, the objective of this message is to help us to grow beyond our pain. The objective of this message is to help us to grow beyond our disappointments. The disappointment that we may experience as we grow through life. My prayer for everyone listening to this sermon this morning is that you will not just go through life, but you will grow through life. Amen. Some people grow through life. Why some of us grow through life. As you grow through life, you will pick up one or two scars along the way. Your scar becomes an integral part of your life. It becomes your story. The evidence that you are alive is that you are growing. And oftentimes, we have scars to show for it. The idea of turning your scar into wisdom is to learn from experience. Those who don't learn from experience will repeat history. The story of Jephthah is the story of a man who received a scar of rejection, who received a scar of humiliation, Despite the scar, he moved on, which is life. He did not allow the rejection 
to limit or define him. He turned his car into wisdom. You see, though he was denied leadership by his family, by his sibling, God gave him a new platform to lead. Human being may humiliate you. Human being may ridicule you because of your scar. God will celebrate your scar. Amen. Everyone who has written you off shall be surprised to see you at the top. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So therefore, your scar should make you better and not bitter. The devil wants you to be bitter. God wants you to be better. God uses cars to develop us. Satan uses cars to destroy us. Jephthah's brother wants to use his car to destroy him. What was his car? They said his mother was a prostitute. They rejected him because of the scar. As a matter of fact, Jephthah had no clue what business or profession his mother was into. He was just born by a woman. And people now came to tell him that you are worthless because of your mother's history. People now came to tell him you cannot function in this space because you don't belong here because of your background. So people decided to label him a son of a prostitute. They wrote him off. You cannot make good success in life. You cannot attain anything. Because your background is nothing to write home about. Leave. They ran him out of the house. They humiliated him. They rejected him. And maybe you have been rejected in one way or the other. Maybe you have been humiliated by reason of your, of your scar. By reason of what you went through. Maybe somebody has written you off by reason of your story. Jephthah left. He did not hang around and be bitter and be upset. He left. While man rejected his car, God was about to celebrate his car. And that's why I say this morning with all confidence, everyone who has written you off, they shall be surprised to see you at the top. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The devil wants to make you bitter. Don't allow him. Mm. Satan wants you to feel like a victim. But God wants you to feel like a victorious man. Amen. Despite your scar. Mm. You see. Every tough battle. That comes your way. And my way. Will definitely leave you with a scar. Be it emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, mental. There will always be a form of scar that will remind you of what you have gone through. The battle you have fought. The pain you have endured. And very importantly, the loss and emptiness you felt. And these cars should not limit you. Don't be shy about it. And rather be proud of it. Why? It announces your strength. Your never give up attitude. Your resilience. Your patience. Your courage. You see, not everyone can go through what you have gone through. 
Not everyone can go through what you went through and still be as strong and full of energy as you are. Some of the things you have gone through and still be full of energy, some people would have gone through it and you will never hear about them again. Not everyone can withstand or endure the pain and the hardship you have experienced and still rise above average existence. Let your scar become that defining moment. I read a true life story that I want to share with you this morning. A true life story that took place in a zoo in Botswana, in Africa. There was a particular chimpanzee named Jagade. This chimpanzee went through a lot to make a name for himself. Jagade was brought into the zoo from Ethiopia after a wildfire destroyed his previous habitat. When this chimpanzee was brought in, the other chimpanzees already living in this zoo did not want him to be part of the family. For months, Jagade has to fight his way through to relevance among the group. After several months of fight, Jagade had numerous scars over his body. And someone who visited the zoo asked the zookeeper why Jagade had so much scars. The zookeeper replied, the scar on his body shows what Jagade has gone through to become the leader of this group. He said, Jagade was never welcome to the group when he first came into the zoo. His fellow chimps never wanted him around. Jagade was living like an outcast among his fellow chimpanzees. When food is brought in, they gang up against him so he won't eat from the shear. They prevented him from mating with the female chimpanzees in the ranks. This went on for some months. And one day, Jagade began to fight his way through to get food and to mate with females. As this went for long, with each day beginning and ending with a fight for survival, fight to feed, fight for space, fight for mating, Above all, fight for recognition. This fight always left a scar on his body. It came to the point where Jagade became the chimp nobody wanted to mess around with. No chimpanzee there stands in his way. He became so prominent and powerful and soon became the leader of the group. That is why the scripture says, don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Jagade's story made him stand out when visitors visited the zoo. Every visitor to the zoo rushed to his section just to behold this chimpanzee who has fought and gone through hell to become relevant and powerful among his fellow chimps. Beloved, why have I shared this story with you? Let your scar become your story. Let it inspire others to see that with determination and a heart of a fighter, they can win any battle in life. Amen. Let your story motivate others not to give up. 
Let it motivate people not to give up. We all get battered down by circumstances. Sometimes we even we are battered down by people, family members. Many of us try to hide this car, to mask them, and to pretend they were never there to begin with. The truth is, scars never truly go away. In life, we must go through the short-term pain to reach the long-term gain. I repeat, in life, we must go through the short-term pain to reach the long-term gains. A life worth living is about growth, beloved. A life worth living is about growth. It's not about comfort. Embrace your scar. As a matter of fact, burn it as fuel for your journey. Burn your scar as fuel for your journey. Your scar should be the reason for somebody's laugh. Your scar should be the reason for somebody's laugh. Let me explain. Let your scar become the reason why somebody will laugh again. Let your scar become the reason why somebody will laugh again. Somebody who is going through a lot, who thinks that they are doomed, who thinks there's no way out. After you have shared your story, let your story be the reason why this person will laugh again. Your laugh must never be the reason for somebody's pain. In the name of Jesus. I say your laugh must never be the reason for somebody's pain. People must draw strength from your scar. People must draw strength from your scar. People must draw strength from your wound. People must draw strength from your pain. The story that gave you that scar should be an inspiration to someone who is at the verge of giving up and throwing in the towel. Even Jesus, in his post-resurrection, had scars to show his disciples. When he appeared to them. The holes in his hand. His feet and side. They were still there. Still visible. He was able to show them. In fact. These cars were very much part of Jesus transformed identity. My brothers and my sisters. Rather than trying to erase your scar. Rather than trying to hide them. Or pretend they never existed. You should acknowledge their existence. Many times. Many, many times in life. The very problem we think is going to destroy us. Becomes the platform for your promotion. The very problem you think is going to destroy you. Becomes the platform for your promotion. Tell your neighbor, your problem is your platform for promotion. Come on, tell somebody, your problem is your platform for promotion. Can I tell you something? Your Goliath is your glory. Your Goliath is your glory. We will not hear of David if there was no Goliath. Your Goliath is your glory. We don't like to admit it. But we need enemies in our lives. The enemies we face makes us more aware of areas of need in our lives. We need enemies in our lives. The enemies we face makes us aware of the areas of need in our lives that we would never have recognized had we not not faced that enemy. You see, some of the greatest discoveries in our lives have come because of an adversary's challenge. An adversary that challenged you to come into the realization 
that you cannot afford to fail because somebody is waiting to laugh at you. Amen, church? I said some of the greatest discoveries in our lives have come because of an adversary, an adversary that challenged you, challenged you to come to the realization that you cannot afford to fail. You cannot afford to go down. You cannot afford to fail because somebody is waiting to laugh at you. Will you give them the opportunity to laugh at you? If somebody says to you, you will amount to nothing. They are waiting on the day whereby that word will come through. Will you wait for the day to come through? You will deny the adversary an opportunity to laugh at you. And what they said to you forms a scar that motivates you not to fail. Who would have heard of David if not for Goliath? Goliath was David's platform of elevation. That Goliath you're trying to bind might as well be your platform that God wants to use to announce your relevance in life. We must be careful how we bind. Don't bind things that are designed to elevate you. Who would have heard of Moses had there not been a Pharaoh? In the process of confronting your Goliath and your Pharaoh, you might pick up some scar. It's part of your story. I have discovered, my brothers and my sisters, I have discovered in life, your friends create comfort, but your adversaries generate inspiration for success. Friends create comfort. Adversaries generate inspiration for success. Your success story sometimes is a byproduct of what someone said to you indirectly that forced you out of your comfort zone. There are persons in life who must not see your beginning. God moved you out of the space for your own good and safety. And you may suffer a scar in the process. Sometimes in life, only a handful must see your beginning. Because the negative word of envious people can kill your dream. Don't blame that supervisor who forced you to resign. Don't blame that manager who failed to give you good appraisal year after year. God used them to launch you into the deep. For something bigger. Whilst you're upset with them, God is grateful for them. Don't be surprised. When God is ready to bless you and take you to the next level of your life, the normal people around you will begin to behave abnormal towards you. Don't be surprised. When God is about to elevate you, the normal people around you become abnormal because God is up to something. They told Jephthah, leave. You don't have inheritance here. Your mother is a prostitute. Leave. Don't be surprised. When normal people start behaving abnormal in your life, watch out. God is up to something. Why would Abraham and Sarah send Hagar and her son away with a flask of water? How will they survive with a flask of water? Very abnormal. God was getting ready 
to pronounce a blessing upon her son, Ishmael. When someone who used to like you begin to dislike you for no reason, God is up to something in your life. Genesis 21, verse 14 to 19. Genesis 21, verse 14 to 19. So Abraham got up early in the morning and prepared the food and a container of water and strapped them on Hagar's shoulders. Then he sent her away with, the, the son, with their son. And she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of Bathsheba. When the water was gone, she put the boy in a shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch the boy die, she said. And she burst into tears. But God heard the boy crying. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Go to him and comfort him. For I will make him a great nation from his descendants. Then Hagar opened her eyes. And she saw a well full of water. She quickly filled her water container and gave the boy a water to drink. My brothers and my sisters, we know the story that drove Hagar out of the house. But somehow, Abraham and Sarah agreed to send her away. She left with a scar of rejection. She left with her son and they, they wandered about aimlessly. And there are times when you suffer rejection. You don't know what else to do. You don't know where to turn. You don't know where to start from. In those moments, Watch out. God is so close to you. God is so close to you to turn your scar into wisdom. To help you overcome that pain. Be careful. While she was there crying, God heard the prayer, the, the, the crying of the baby. When she was in Abraham's house, she didn't get a visitation. In the place of your pain, in the place of your scar, God wants to minister to you. God wants to use your scar and turn it to wisdom and turn it to strength and give you a new opportunity to grow. She never heard from God while at Abraham's house. Her scar took her to the place. Where God could speak to her. Her scar took her to the place where God could bless the son. God pronounced a blessing upon the son. A son who was, up, who was left to die. A son who was left in the bush. The mother said, I can't deal with this sight. I can't watch my son die. Let me stay over here. I know he's going to die anyway. Let me stay and just let this pain be over. But God says, that's car you're running away from. I want to use it for my glory. I want to use it to elevate you. I want to use it to promote your story. To heal people. So that people will know that somebody can go through this and still be alive. Hallelujah. God blessed the boy. And she eventually picked up the boy. In addition to blessing the boy. Futuristically, the very problem that she had, the problem of water, was solved. God opened her eyes. 
I want to tell you, beloved. Sometimes the greater the pain, the greater the revelation. See, in that place of pain, God ministered to this woman. God opened her eyes. In that place of pain that you are right now, God wants to minister to you. Just pay attention. God wants to minister to you. Let your pain drive you to God and not away from God. Let your pain, let your scar drive you to God. Let it drive you to God and not away from him. Maybe you have picked up a scar as a result of a failed relationship. Maybe you have picked up a scar as a result of a failed business. Maybe you have picked up a scar as a result of rejection from people who are supposed to embrace you. Maybe. You have picked up a scar as a result of a lost opportunity. This morning, I am here to announce to you that God wants to heal you. Amen. God wants to heal you completely. Don't allow that scar to limit you. Don't allow that scar to define your future. God wants to help you today to turn that scar into wisdom. We sang the song... Let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. Wherever you're listening to this sermon, turn that to prayer right now. Let your living water flow over my soul. Lord, I can see the sky. I can feel the scar. Lord, let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take over. Come and take control of every situation that has troubled my mind. All my cares and burdens unto you, Lord, I roll. Will you give the Holy Spirit a chance this morning to heal you today? To turn your scar into wisdom? You see, I know what it is to fight giants that have come to hinder your progress and try to force you into the boundaries of limitation and isolation. I know. Don't be afraid to pick up a scar. Like David, confront your Goliath. Run after your Goliath. The Bible says, David ran after Goliath. When people were running away from Goliath, David ran after him. With his simple slingshot and a mouthful of confidence, David ran toward Goliath. With one release of the stone, the giant fell. David ran and cut off Goliath's head for the king. A great victory was won. My brothers and my sisters, God does not want you to live in the shadow of your Goliath, your scar. Don't live in the shadow of your scar. Fearful of the future. Afraid to step out to speak up. Instead, he wants you to face your Goliath. Face your Goliath. Face that scar. Don't allow it to limit you. Don't allow it to define your boundaries. The story of David and Goliath can teach us much more about how to face our giants in life. If you are always complaining of how unfair people have been to you or weeping over criticism and rejection or upset because somebody mistreated you in the past, get over it. Get over it. What God has for you, ahead of you, is greater than your present pain. Get over it. Beloved, the struggles of life makes you stronger. Struggles, challenges, hard times offers us more value than any other time of our life. 
You cannot grow without struggle. You cannot grow without resistance. Think about the time in your life that may have been hard, but forced you to become a better person in life. Think about that time. Think about a time in your life that may have been hard, but it forced you to become a better person. You cannot grow without struggle. You cannot develop strength without resistance. Without challenging yourself. My brothers and my sisters, hear me loud and clear. If you don't challenge yourself, life will challenge you. If you don't challenge yourself, life will challenge you. Very quickly, I have a few points that I want to share with us. How can I turn my scar into wisdom? I want to share five practical steps we can take to turn our scar into wisdom. Number one, five practical steps that we can take to turn our scar into wisdom. Number one, Bring your scar to God. Don't run from Him. Bring your scar to God. Don't run from Him. You see, when you run from God in the season of your challenge, all you have left with is your only limited ability. To cope with what you're going through. When you run from God in the season of your scar, your challenges, all you have left is your limited ability to cope with what you're going through. Your ability is, that is limited is all you have left. On the other hand, God invites us to draw near to him that we might experience his peace, his healing, and closeness. And this is what the scripture points to in Psalm 34 verse 18. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. God is close to the brokenhearted. To people who are going through a scar. To people who have a scar in their life. The Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. There are some scars that will leave your heart broken. God is close to you. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Maybe your spirit has been crushed by the reason of the scar you received. God invites you to draw near to him this morning. The Lord is close to you, beloved. The Bible never instructs us to hide our scar. But instead, Shows us where to direct it to. In Psalm 147 verse 3. Psalm 147 verse 3. Look at it. He heals the broken hearted. Hallelujah. He heals the broken hearted. And bandages their wounds. God heals the broken hearted. And bandages your wound. Only God can stop you from bleeding. Those emotional bleed. Only God can stop you from bleeding. If you try to stop the bleeding by running after things in the world, it will stop. Some people run to alcohol to stop the bleeding. Some people turn to smoking to stop the bleeding. When all that is over, they are still bleeding. Only God can stop you from bleeding. 
in Jesus' name. So don't let your scar define you. Let it refine you. Let your scar refine you. Don't let it define you. Strange and unpleasant situation confront us all. How we respond to them defines our character and the quality of our life. You can choose to sit in perpetual sadness, immobilized by the gravity of your loss, or you can choose to rise from the pain and treasure the most precious gift God gave to you, life. And this was the story of Joseph. This was the story of Ruth. They did not allow their scar to define them. Instead, it did what? It refined them. Let your scar refine you. You refines you to be a better person. Don't let it define you. Don't let people address you by your scar. When people start addressing you by your scar, that means your scar has defined you. But when your scar refines you, people don't even know you have scar. And that's why Joseph could make this statement as I close. I will continue next week in part three. That's why Joseph made this statement in Genesis 50. Genesis 50, verse 19 to 21. Genesis 50, it says, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many. Don't be afraid. You speak like this when your scar has refined you. Amen, church? But when your scar has defined you, this is how you speak. How can I help you? After all you guys have done to me, you think you can come here and be asking me for favor? You have lost your mind. This is my time to punish you. I will not help you. Leave my sight. In life, what you sow is what you reap. I'm going to lock you up. This is your time to reap. You talk like this when your, when your scar has defined you. But when your scar has refined you, he said, don't be afraid. Am I God that I can punish? You intended to harm me. But God intended it for good. When God takes you beyond your scar, you sing a different song. Your song will not contain bitterness. Your song will not contain get back hatred. Your song contains something bigger than your pain. Something greater than your scar. God wants to use your scar for his glory. You intended it for bad. God intended it for good. Who is talking like this? The man who begged his brothers not to sell him. The man who was put in the, in the, in the, in the pit for doing nothing. The man who was thrown into slavery. The man who was, who was accused of rape for nothing. He went through so much that it's supposed to make him bitterness personified. Instead, his car refined him. That when people see you, people who have mistreated you, and God heals your wound, allow God to heal your wound. God will put you in a position to minister to people who mistreated you. Amen. 
Your new refined position is enough to speak for you. If you will allow it. He brought me to this position so that I could save the life of many. What a powerful statement of refinement. God brought me to this position. God allowed me to go through scar like this to bring me to a point where I will be a help to many, where my scar can become a lesson for people to learn from, whereby my scar can make people laugh again. My scar will make people who have been crying when they see your scar, when they hear your story, they will burst into laughter. If God can put you through, God can pull me through. If God can pull you through, God can pull me through. He said, don't be afraid, guys. Listen. At one point, the people who made Joseph afraid, Joseph told them, don't be afraid. <laughs> My God. The people who, you see, do you know what it is for your siblings to gang up against you? For your siblings to say that God is doing too much for you. We're going to level you. I can see the pain in Joseph's eyes. Same brothers, please don't do this to me. What did I do? Why are you putting me in the pit? Why are you taking away my coat of many colors? What did I do? They took away the coat. Even he was begging. They didn't stop. They put him in the pit. They were planning to kill him for nothing. And in the midst of all that, they sold him into slavery. How could you watch your brother go with strangers and go to sleep? How could you watch your brother suffer so much pain and you go to sleep? But he went through all that. And he said to them, don't, you see, if your scar was still active, ah, he wouldn't tell them, don't be afraid, say, be afraid, oh. Because you're going to die. Because this is my turn to teach you a lesson. It is not your job to teach people a lesson. It is God who teaches lesson. You just enjoy the glory that comes from the story. And let God do the teaching Hallelujah. of the lesson. When you say I will teach you a lesson... You're trying to help God to be God. Nobody can help God to be God. He's God all by himself. God don't need you to be God. He doesn't need me to be God. Don't be afraid. Look at what he says. So, Look at it, verse 2. Now look at this. When I read this, I said, God, help us to refine our scar. He said, look at this. I will continue to take care of you and your children. When God has refined your scar, you don't speak hatred. You don't speak bitterness. He said, I will continue despite what you have done. Despite the rejection. It's not my job to teach you the lesson. I will continue to take care of you and your children. You see, there comes a time in your life where the favored move to the, 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 the favored one becomes the responsible one. There comes a time when you are the favored one. There was a time when Joseph was the favored one. In this verse, Joseph is no longer the favored one. He's now the responsible one. God doesn't bless
bless you or give you favor just for you for favor's sake. From, from the favored one, you move to the responsible one. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph is the responsible one. He's no longer the favored one. The responsible one is another higher level of favor. His brothers now are the favored one. Joseph is the responsible one. God wants to take you from the space of being favored to the place of being responsible. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking how kindly to them. In Jesus' name. By speaking kindly to them. When your sky refines you, let's look at another woman that the fire is refined. Ruth chapter 1, 16 to 18. We close with that. Ruth chapter 1, 16 to 18. It says, But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you or turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you leave, I will leave. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You see, beloved, this woman... She did. We know what Ruth went through. She became a widow so early in life. And um, that was enough for her to be bitter and just say, Naomi, bye. Too much crosses, I follow you. I'm not going to stick around with you. I'm gone. But instead, she allowed her scar to refine her. And when your scar refines you, you speak differently. And she said all these kind words. In that place of refinement, God is preparing you for your next level. While she was saying all these things, she never knew there was a Boaz waiting for her. But if she had allowed the situation to make her bitter and not better. She would have just stayed in the place of bitterness. She would have just been dejected and all she thinks about is her loss. All she thinks about is her husband that is gone. But she ran to God. And that's why we say, let your scar move you to God and not away from God. Because, beloved, what you have lost it's nothing compared to what God still has in stock for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Ruth stuck with God. Allow the pain to refine her. And she's able to make such statements. My brothers and my sisters. I don't know where this salmon has met you. But I want you to know this morning. That your Goliath can be your glory. That problem, that scar can be your platform for your elevation. But what is, the, what is the first practical thing we should do? Take your scar to God. Take your scar to God. That's why the song says, let your living water flow my soul, my heavy heart. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Let your living water flow over my soul. 
Maybe you have suffered the scar of a bad relationship. Maybe you have suffered the scar of a child that is giving you problem. Maybe you have suffered the scar of a failed business. My brothers and my sisters, let that scar refine you. Don't make it define you. Let's rise up on our feet. I want you in your homes. Turn this song to prayer. Let your living water flow, flow over my soul to heal every pain, to heal every sky in my life. Christy, come up, help me. Yes, sing it to the Lord wherever you are listening to this sermon. Let it refine me.